Six candidates are battling it out for the top job as Conservative Party leaders. So far, we've heard from Jean Charest and Scott Aitchison on why they deserve that role. Joining us in studio this morning is Roman Baber. Good to have you with us here in studio. Good to be with you. Uh, party unity is what we've asked all of the candidates so far. It is a growing concern for the Conservatives. It was a main factor in why the party lost the election last fall. Uh, you were removed from the Ontario PC party by re-elected Premier Doug Ford. Uh, this is because of your views on lockdown. You published an open letter and then uh, were asked to step down. Why are you qualified to be the person now to bring the federal Conservatives together? Look, in the last couple of years, I've shown leadership to uh, speak for many Canadians who didn't have a voice. Uh, as some of your viewers know, I wrote a sensible, moderate letter to Premier Ford asking for a balanced public health response and that we should consider the collateral harm of lockdown. Uh, and, and that's, in fact, the theme that I'd like to bring to the Conservative Party. It's to unite it through democracy within the party. And that means that we should respect diversity of opinion, not just of all Canadians, but certainly within caucus and within parliament. So I would propose to, uh, first of all, welcome back Canadians that feel that the party did not speak up for them in the last uh, federal election. Uh, welcome back those that have differing views. And, and certainly welcome back uh, Western Conservatives and Western Canadians by um, engaging them in the national conversation and proposing a very robust energy plan. Uh, I'm going to get back to your point on welcoming them back in a moment, but I wanted to get your response to the fact that travel mandates, vaccine mandates may, may now be lifted. This was something that was a big issue for you. They have now been suspended. What's your response to that? Well, I, I certainly welcome that. I've been fighting against passports and mandates for the last two years. Um, I, I made the voluntary choice that most Canadians made, but I don't think that we should make anyone do anything against their will. And preventing someone access to normal everyday life uh, is certainly uh, something that made no sense in my view, respectfully, in the science. Uh, or was in line with our constitutional framework. So um, I think that we actually have to go a step further, whether it's better banning federal workplace mandates. Same with the provinces. Uh, provinces still allow for workplace mandates. Provincially regulated institutions such as universities still impose passports. Uh, I think that it's time to do away with that. Uh, I want to touch on something that you had just mentioned when you said welcome back. Why are there people in the Conservative Party who feel that they're not welcome? Well, um, I mean, I myself was, was not welcome in the provincial movement uh, because of my uh, view that uh, we should factor in the collateral harm of lockdown into our public health response. But many Canadians went and either did not vote or voted for another party because they feel that the Conservative Party did not stand up for them against lockdowns, against passports, against mandates, did not stand up for their children against the mental health uh, catastrophe that there was imposed on our children or, or um, the eating disorders that they have suffered from. And, and so I think that the Conservative Party should feel confident to articulate where it stands clearly. Um, I will never, uh, I will always say what I believe and I will always do what I believe is right. Uh, I want to talk to you about something that you just mentioned, which is, uh, you know, the health care crisis and, and part of the uh, ripple effects of lockdown. And, um, you know, you've said that if you became prime minister that you would fire uh, Canada's top doctor, Theresa Tam. If you became prime minister, that'd be 2025. There's a chance that she might not even still have that job at that point. Uh, the Canadian Mental Health Association said that you mischaracterized their research on the connection between the pandemic and issues like eating disorders and suicidal ideation. Um, there is a seventh wave that is expected to come this fall. Uh, if you were elected the party leader, your views may not necessarily reflect all those of the party. How can you be the right leader for the party and the country as a whole? Well, look, first of all, with respect to the Canadian Health Association, I cited their statistics correctly, except that in early January 2021, they suggested that the mental health pandemic and the suicidal ideations experienced by our children is that due to the pandemic. I said no, it's due to the lockdown. They weren't depressed or suicidal because um, most folks at end of life were dying in, in congregate settings or long-term care homes. They were suicidal because they were deprived of socialization, because they were out of school, because they couldn't play sports. And so the only disagreement with the Mental Health Association was the causation. Um, so I stand by my position. Um, at the same time, look, um, I think that the Conservative Party, um, like um, most institutions, uh, needs to welcome diversity of opinion. We had this dogma around COVID where it was essentially forbidden to articulate uh, a dissenting view. And I don't think that it's not just bad for our democracy, it's also bad for our public policy. Uh, I want to touch on the issue of abortion. Uh, every candidate has said that they would not reopen the abortion debate, uh, except for Leslie Lewis, who is anti-abortion. And you said you would allow MPs to bring forward legislation if you were leader. Why would you allow MPs to reopen the issue? So look, um, 
I'm, I'm personally of the view that government does not have a role in how people start or grow their families. Uh, I've always felt that government should stay away out of our personal lives, just like it should stay away out of our personal decisions uh, with respect to health care and, and, and vaccination. At the same time, you have to respect parliamentary democracy. I cannot prohibit MPs from introducing legislation. That is their fundamental parliamentary role. And while I, might, while I will vote against such legislation, um, I, I cannot tell an MP that they are denied a, a foundational parliamentary privilege, which is to introduce legislation. If they cannot, then what are they even there for? You might as well just have a leader and, and vote by proxy or not have any MPs at all. We have to respect parliamentary democracy. As, as I've said, uh, I suffered arguably from deficit of parliamentary democracy, and that's not something that I will impose on my caucus. But my view is what, what people, how people decide to grow their family is their own business, and that's not something that the government has a preview on, and certainly not something you pay me for. Roman Baber, good to have you in studio today. Great to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Good to be with you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.